What's up, Artemers? I'm here today doing something a little different. As most of you know, I'm taking a class that's completely based around Nietzsche. And this week we had to read Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Pardon me, by the way, I've been pretty much just having a cold and leaking from my face all week. But we had to write a paper, and so I really wanted to share it with you today, because the book Thus Spoke Zarathustra was incredibly inspiring. I'm not exactly sure what kind of paper my professor wanted, but I think I turned in a work of art instead. But I wanted to share it with you guys today, too, and I hope you like it. Alright, so I'm reading today a piece that I wrote on the bus ride home, which is about an hour long, and then the bus ride to school, but I wrote the majority of it in the first bus trip. <laughs> the title is Thus Spoke Zarathustra on the Sheep and Shepherd. The overman shall be the meaning of the earth. The overman is the most creative the most free from impurities, the most free from good and evil. An analogy of man is that he is on a rope stretching from animal to ubermensch, or overman or superman, one who is constantly in practice of reaching his final form with constant hints of self-sacrifice in order to find the final form the final self, and this is his ongoing. His downgoing will be whatever he places as his cornerstone, wherever he places his passion and love, like the rope dancer's joy and pride in danger. Thus spoke Zarathustra. There is another analogy where there lives both a shepherd and a herd, as a representation of the master and slave morality. To expand this would give more justice to the beauty in the symbolism. Imagine a field in which there is a large herd of white sheep, buying and eating their grass, and there stands the herd's shepherd, with the crook of his staff curving over the arch of the sun's warm rays. In order to master the craft of shepherding, the shepherd, or shepherdess, must learn how to control his herd, with either the use of his staff or his love, with it whatever he may in order to teach his herd obedience. Thus spoke Zarathustra. The herd can be found a slave to many things, the most dangerous of which is that of another's shepherd. Commonly, sheep want to eat all of their grass, have the cleanest coat, bed all the ewes, and this will become their highest calling. At times, this herd can be distracted from their vice and can be tamed to listen and play well with each other. But there are other moments in which the shepherd cannot reach his flock, no matter how hard or how loud he cries. How angrily or how nicely, no matter the sound or movement the shepherd makes, his herd cannot hear him. For they are distracted by another man giving them better food, better baths, better love. This is a paramount point in which the sheep of one herd can join another, a much larger flock that feasts in the ruler's field. Ready to hang his staff, the shepherd has now lost his herd and has nothing to herd. He is the master of nothing. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Small distractions here and there can be good for the shepherd. It is they that remind him how to act and how to lead his sheep. If he sees two ram trying to start a conflict, he remembers what he is taught. If it is a game, let them play, but if it is not, then do not let it continue. The shepherd controls his herd with care and grace, 
as he knows they owe nothing unto him. It is he that owes them teachings of obedience, of rationale, and of poise. Similarly to that of a father with his children, the sheep must be taught time and time again in order to understand that they must follow suit. Patience is required in the shepherd. He will need to remind himself that sheep care nothing of rationality. And without patience, he can lose the original goal altogether. After long, more distractible sights can become smaller and smaller as the shepherd and herd learn to coincide with their duties. Even some sheep can nip at others to keep them in accord. It is here where the shepherd and the herd are together thinking as one, that the field can carry harmony and all will feel satisfied. This is the super shepherd. Thus spoke Zarathustra. The super shepherd has taught obedience to his sheep. Even when he is not there, they will still follow in his direction. Steering clear of what problems brought them to their most amount of joy, but also in ties with their most amount of suffering, need no longer do they stress about these things, for they know their shepherd has them taken care of. He takes heed for his herd and blinds them of otherworldly things. As if the shepherd had found a bearded collie who sweetly rounds up the shepherd and plays with them while the shepherd takes his leaf to find more. The shepherd knows his herd can only grow larger if he shows other sheep what he has adopted. And in creating this new world for himself, he is also ready to master another craft. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Alright, you guys, I'm really glad, or I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna admit I'm not the best at reading out loud at all, <laughs> but I'm, I really hope that you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun writing it. It was something completely out of what I do normally and almost closer to poetry, I think. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you're here all the way to the end. And as always, I put up my art on Redbubble, and so if you want to check that out over there, I have all of the other pieces that I have been drawing for YouTube. And yeah, it's a super awesome website where they print art onto objects like stickers and mugs and t-shirts and all that jazz. So be sure to support the channel if you want to. Um, or just, you know, support me by watching and liking and subscribing. That's super important also, and I'm much appreciated. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I love you. Bye!